Hi, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my uh, YouTube video today. Okay, um, what I'm going to be taking you through today is this bit of kit, which we can see there is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Tracker. Be a basic guide, okay? Um, how to set it up. Um, Bit of basic about polar alignment, not, not massively in depth. How do you uh, attach the various bits of equipment and, and use it? I'm not going to go into massive depth in all the areas, okay? Um, if some of you do happen to watch this video and you do wish to have more detail on other areas, okay? Ask me, pop it in the uh, comments, and, um, and, I'll, and I'll get back to you. So, okay, Star Watcher. Skywatcher Star Adventurer, okay, brilliant bit of kit, absolutely brilliant. Um, I've had, I bought this about two weeks ago now. Um, been out with it twice, um, absolutely love it. Uh, two times gone out, uh, photographing the Milky Way, and had excellent tracking um, and, and great results in photos, okay. So, but when I first got it, uh, I was a bit frustrated. I mean, the instructions, didn't, didn't seem that great to be to be totally honest with you there were some areas in it where they it was pretty self-explanatory but there were others where it was just a bit vague um, and I was a bit frustrated I, I, I watched quite a few YouTube videos to try and get myself familiarized before going out some of them videos are great there's great videos out there and they and they did explain a lot um, but it just there were some areas where I was just left a bit like I'm not too sure so I just went out and then just thought well I'm gonna try it and see what see what results work see if I can get it right okay so I just wanted to take you through um, my way a basic setup and my basic way of operating it okay and how how I do it um, and to see if that can help anyone so because I've, I've noticed a lot of questions on Facebook groups that, that I'm on um, astrophotography groups and there seem to be a lot of questions people struggle in certain areas okay so um, first part important is a tripod okay I mean I'm not going to go through what tripod you should get um, but I have the three-legged thing um, three-legged thing Corey Punks okay great great tripod um, it's not the top of the range for three-legged things but um, it's a pretty good one it's got a decent payload uh, 14 kilograms and uh, with the, the Skywatcher itself the Equatorial mount it, that has a payload of five kilograms as well so it's a good um, you need a good sturdy study uh, tripod to start with okay so get on the installation so remove the ball head from the tripod first thing you need to install is the equatorial mount okay so that simply screws on the base of your tripod like so okay nice and firmly on there as you can see Next part will be the tracker itself, okay? So, I have to keep moving here. You'll see on here this um, knob at the front, okay? And there are numbers at the front, which is the declination angle. You kind of want to put it on where the scope, okay, is at the opposite end of the, this knob here, okay? So we literally just slot it in here. Um, there's a retaining lug there, okay? Simply slot it in so it can't go any further. And then tighten it up with this locking, locking nut here, okay? And that is that. So, at this point, we're out in the field, we've put our mount and our tracker on. Before we go any further and attach any other equipment, camera or telescope equipment, we have to polar align, okay? Because you can't with this with this uh, tracker, with some more expensive ones, there are mounts on the side um, and you can fit with your equipment and obviously look through that tracker to polar align. You can do it on this one. It goes through the center, okay? So we have to polar align before we attach any, any equipment. Um, Scott, I do say that if you use the fine adjustment 
L bracket that you can attach that and adjust but you actually can't because as you see as you look through this rear of the scope and out the front once this is fitted you can see through it however at night out in the field when it's dark you have to use this piece of equipment which is um, the scope illuminator lights up red through the scope so you only need to use and see the crosshairs in the scope but you, you can't when that's fitted on you cannot put that attach that on there so you, you can't attach any equipment before you polar align so polar alignment this seems to be the biggest bugbear I've noticed um, on various groups and forums uh, with people using these trackers. Uh, I, I say I've used it twice, and I, to be fair, I, I looked at a few YouTube videos, um, which kind of helped me out. Um, and I just thought, yeah, I'm going to have a go at this. Went out in the field. I did it first time and second time fairly, fairly easily. Uh, five to ten minutes the first time when I was out. Okay. Um, so polar alignment basics. This, this tracker needs to be aligned with the North Pole, okay, in conjunction with the North Star Polaris, because Polaris, the North Star is slightly offset to the North Pole. So when you're aligning, when you look through the scope, you'll see on this video a picture of it, um, you'll have crosshairs, zero, three, six, and nine, and then like a circular outer crosshairs as such. And Polaris needs to be on the outside on that circular band, depending on where you are in the world, your location time, okay? Um, and there are various apps that you can use um, to, that will tell you exactly where to put it on the crosshairs. So, um, Skywatcher do one, the Sam, Sam Mini Console app, which which is used in conjunction with the, um, the smaller version, Wi-Fi version of this Skywatcher. You connect it, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth remotely to it. Um, Essentially, I've seen a video where they say you use that one and you can just turn on the location data and it will show you, from pick up your GPS location and show you where to put it on. It didn't work for me. Uh, I don't know why. Um, it was my phone. I'm not too sure. However, I used another app called Polar Clock. Great app. So simple. Just install. Didn't have to put in any information. Just turn on your GPS location and then it shows you that picture of a simulation of the scope and where to put it on the circular cross there. Okay, um, so you're out in the field, you've set up to this point, you need to find Polaris, the North Star. Um, it's pretty easy to find in the, in the sky anyway, but if you're not sure if you how to find the North Star Polaris, there are apps for that as well. There are plenty of free apps such as Stellarium. I'll, I'll give some in, links in the description below. They, these certain apps will show you augmented reality. You look through your phone and it will show you in the sky whereabouts the North Star is. But there are various other ways to find it so you need to get in the rough sorry before I carry on <laughs> this this comes vertically usually from the installation um, you need to turn it so that it angles to the declination angle uh, that Polaris will be depending on your area of the world okay so I think from where I am it's roughly 51 or 52 degrees um, on the front of the tracker, okay, there are numbers on here, 0 to 90, okay, simulating 0 to 90 degrees. What you need to do is undo this locking lever here, okay, and then this dial, this knob here, you turn it, and there's like an arrow there and, and notches for the numbers, and you turn it to get your, um, to collate to where your your degrees are your longitude in the earth so I think about 52 here for example so turn it to roughly about 52 degrees okay and then lock the lever back into place okay so this puts you apparently roughly at the angle of, of where you need to um, see Polaris okay so you're out in the field you're in position okay Good stable traveling needs to be nice and nice and flat, nice and level in the bubble. Uh, Framber and I use um, the stiletto type heels from Free Legged Thing to get into the ground, get a weight in between the bottom, of the, in the center of the tripod, pull it down, keep it nice and nice and level. 
Okay, and then find North Star, Polaris in the sky. And what I personally do is I will crouch down, okay, and then I'll just sort of look over the top of the scope as if you're sort of like looking over the top of a, a, a rifle barrel to get it in the rough, rough alignment, okay. It's no point, you could be just looking through the scope and it could be kind of off. If it's off slightly, it'll be off even more in the scope, you won't even see it, it's a smaller field of view. So I just look down, get it roughly over, think, yeah, that looks good. Um, and then the point of looking through the scope, and hopefully you will see that it's within the scope picture. Okay, and that's that's your good starting point. As you can see it through the scope, you're good to go. Um, luckily with Polaris, there's not many, when you're on, when it's in the scope, there's not many stars around it to confuse you. So, and then the next point is you unlock this locking gear mechanism here, okay? That enables you to turn this, because when you look through, there are um, two sort of lines, you cross their lines, and it's zero, three, six, and nine. Um, when you look at this apps, it's like Polar Clock, or Sam Mini Console app, it will show you the picture, um, and it'll be zero at the top, six at the bottom, so you need to line that irrespectively in there as well. So you just turn, look through the scope and turn this, until it lines up with zero at the top, six at the bottom. I know from mine personally that this lock and lever at the bottom is pretty much lined up, okay? So once you've got that lined up, tighten the lock in gear mechanism back up, okay? Tighten that up. So that's lined up inside the scope. Now you just got to copy what's the polar clock picture showing you exactly where Polaris is on the circular crosshairs as to it is on there. And that's done with fine adjustments. So, on the back here, you'll see these two lugs, they are your um, fine adjustments for left and right. When you look through the scope, when you turn, you turn these the same direction, either backwards, okay, so you turn both of them backwards to move it either left or right, I can't quite remember which one, and then you turn them both forwards, okay, and that will move, it will move the scope slightly left and right, okay, finally, to adjust it. And then in conjunction with your the knob in the front for your declination up and down, okay, so that's up and down, and then this is left and right, okay, so you move that, find adjustments till you get it on the point where it needs to be in the scope, okay. Take your time with this, I, I, I sort of noticed that I was, um, when I was first doing it, I was making some adjustments and then when I would change it uh, left a bit, up a bit, when I moved it another way, it would kind of just be out of line slightly. So take your time, keep adjusting it until it, it, it's in the exact place and it's not moving. Um, there is a point where it says in the manual that you could need to check the calibration of the, of the RA axis. So that basically means is when you, there's other videos for this and I did check it. I was lucky it came out of the factory calibrated, some people's aren't. So basically you can do this in the daytime, it's best to do it in the daytime, you look through the scope, you put it at an object, in the, the crosshairs at an object in the, in the distance, and you turn turn this, uh, the front piece on, on the tracker here, and hopefully you've got whatever you've got it pointing on, like a corner of a building or a sign or something, it will stay, it won't drift off. If it's out of calibration, that crosshair will drift off the, whatever you're pointing at. If it's calibrated, it will stay in place. And if it drifts off, you then need to get some very small Allen keys and do some adjustments on, on the scope here, which luckily I didn't have to do. Um, so, going back, carrying on. Um, you've done your fine adjustments and you've got the Polaris aligned in the scope exactly where it needs to be according to your Polar Clock app. And that is you polar aligned. Now before we carry on and attach any of our camera or telescope equipment, um, you just need to be very aware that because you cannot polar align with any kit equi uh, equipment attached, when you when you attach any of your equipment you just need to be very, sh very careful not to knock the tripod or the tracker out of line otherwise you'll be out of polar alignment and you'll have to remove all the equipment and realign, okay? So, 
just be very careful. I mean, with this video, I'm going to be moving things around so you can see it, but when you're doing it on the field, you've just got to be careful. Um, I didn't seem to have a problem when I was doing that night with a red head switch on. You just, just be aware, okay? So, attaching equipment. Um, there are different variations that you can use, okay? Um, I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, I'm just going to go through the two basic ones, okay? So, for, I mean, for example, on the fine adjustment L bracket, you can actually remove this piece, okay, and just have the two um, thread screws there and have, um, you can have your camera on here on a ball head, which is what I'm going to do later, and you can have, fit another ball head on there for another camera or another telescope mount, so you can have dual fittings, okay. I'm just going to go through the two, two, two basics. First one I'm just going to go through is attaching a, a simple ball head, okay, onto the star tracker. So to do that, we need this bit of equipment here, the, the ball head adapter. Okay, before we attach it, just notice that on either side there are two little indents. So when you're attaching it, it slots in the front here. Okay, under this screw. Okay, and when you're screwing it up, you've got to make sure that screw goes into that indent. Okay, so if you line it up in the middle, it pretty much goes into that indent. Turn that up tightly. Okay. The next thing is to attach your ball head, okay? Again, as, as with your tripod, make sure you have a decent ball head, okay? I mean, luckily the one I've got with my tripod is a decent ball head anyway, it's got a 14 kilogram payload, so don't go for a cheap ball head. Um, just screw that onto the top here. There are two, uh, th two thread adapters that come with the kit, two different sizes, a quarter inch and a three quarter inch, okay? so. In case you need a different size so that's screwed on and then the next thing pretty much is to get your ball head in place to attach your camera uh, for the composition you want so I'm just going to move mine so this rough way last two times I've been out um, the Polaris North Star is the opposite way of the Milky Way so I had to Align that way and photograph that way. Take your DSLR camera, attach, and that is that. Essentially ready to go. Okay. You just need to obviously move it around to whatever composition you want to take your uh, exposures. Okay. Once you've set for your composition, I would the next thing I would be doing is attaching my remote release uh, shutter cable on the side, so I don't have to touch the camera, do my settings, um, and then I'm ready to take my, my sort of test shots. Once you're ready, the next step is to turn on the tracker. And that is done by, on the side here, this uh, turn dial, okay? There are different functions on it. I'm not going to go through them all. To be fair, the, the, the manual is pretty pretty self-explanatory on the different uh, modes and what they do. The one we're interested in is the star. Okay, so turn that to the star, which is celestial tracking. It tracks the stars, okay? Turn that on and that is, as soon as you turn it on, it lights up and that is the tracker tracking. Get your remote cable off, do your settings, and then take your exposures, your long exposures. Um, and take a test shot to see how it goes and hopefully or being well with polar alignment, you'll have perfect tracking. Uh, one thing to note as well, sorry I forgot to mention, on the opposite side, on the left here you've got south, time lapse and north. So being in the northern hemisphere, you've got to make sure that's on end for north, obviously if you're in the southern hemisphere yourself. Depends which way it rotates around, okay? So for me it's on north, um, I don't know if you also notice as well, one thing I'm going to mention, as you can see on here I've got duct tape across the battery pack lid, okay, one of the big cons that uh, I noticed when I was reviewing but to buy this, as everyone mentioned, that this comes off easily, very easily, it just slots in and it just falls off very easily, pretty similar with the polar mount as well, that can come off quite easily, so I just get all duct tape around to stop it coming off. <laughs> It doesn't have to just be powered with batteries, it does have a DC 
uh, DC 5 volt um, cable that you can plug in uh, and mount to connect to an external power bank which I've also used and works fine. It is the kind of older connection, not the new micro USB so you need to have a, an, older cam, uh, an older cable but you can power it with an external power pack. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's that is the basic. That is this setup in its most simplest form with a ball head. Okay. Next thing, I'm just gonna take all this off, and I'll show you the fine adjustment bracket. Next bit of care we got is the fine adjustment L bracket. It comes with this dovetail, which you just screw into the end. Okay. Uh, some people just don't even bother using this. The, the purpose of this is to be able to attach the one kilogram counterweight, which I will show you in a minute. So, I've not used this myself yet, as I, all I needed to do was the previous uh, configuration, as I showed you, was with the ball head. I didn't need to, to use this. However, it's very easy to do. Um, just unlock the, me uh, the gear mechanism. Okay, so that's free. Slot this in. There's no lugs in this to, to line it up with, okay? Slot that in. I usually get it in the middle. Tighten that up. This comes with a one kilogram counterweight. Okay, that just slots on. Tightens up. This does come with a, a screw and a nut to go in the end of the bar there to stop this falling off but I just took it out because it's easier to get on and off. So obviously the purpose of the one kilogram can weight is if you've got larger gear on a larger scope, um, larger telephoto lens, you just want that counterbalance to keep it sturdy. Okay. In the top here you could just uh, put your camera on if you're, if you're doing deep space and you just mount it on there if you wish um, but I Personally, attaching the ball head on, on the end of here again. It says, tighten it up, get it into your position. Okay, touch your camera. Or, for example, the, you know, this could be a larger telephoto lens or a, a telescope. Oh, turn that up. Okay, so now what you want to do, especially if you've got obviously bigger gear on, is to balance this out. Okay, so obviously because this is free moving, so what you want to do is bit of patience and just kindly slightly moving the counterweight until you get the correct balance. So. And you want to try it in just a couple of different positions, few different positions. He says, you can see it's a bit fiddly. Um, but you get the general gist. So I mean, I haven't used this yet. So, but you, you get that in the right place so that it, it it's kind of well balanced as you can. And lock that in. Um, lock the gear off, and you're ready to go. And that's with the fine adjustment L bracket on. And again, you can attach second piece of equipment on there, two cameras, two, um, two, two telescopes, one camera, one telescope, okay. That is that, in essence, Star Tracker all fitted and ready to go. If anyone can think of anything else that they'd like me to cover, um, please feel free to um, message me in the comments. I'll, I'll do my best. I love this, bring a bit of kit. Um, I can get this set up pretty, pretty quickly now out in the field in the dark um, and I absolutely love it. Just again take your time with your polar alignment, get that bob on straight away 
be careful when you mount your equipment after to not knock it out. Um, and that is it. that is it. Once you once you've got that on, you, you're fine. Okay, just take your time. Don't get too frustrated with it. If you think you can't do it, don't give up. I know people just giving up because you just couldn't seem to do it. I, I did make a mistake the second time I was out. Um, I was really frustrated. I nearly gave up because I couldn't see through the polyscope, even with the illuminator on. I couldn't. I didn't know what was wrong. I couldn't see the crosshairs. Um, I thought it was something wrong with my eyes until I noticed that you can turn this the end of this here, which is uh, like a focus ring. So I had to ended up turning it all the way around, and then I could see the. Um, crosshairs so you know trial and error you need to live and learn don't give up uh, hope this has helped you out um, please feel free to ask me uh, ask me any questions in the comments thank you